I think it <laughs> it worked. Finally, a stream without technical difficulties feels, <laughs> feels good. Don't say that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, uh, everybody, uh, the fantastic JB Blanc is uh, here. He uh, took time out of his day to uh, come hang out with you guys. So uh, again, uh, we really appreciate it. Of course, Mr. Specht, you are welcome. <laughs> hey, Mr. Specht, I like that. It makes me feel. It makes me feel like an adult. Um, so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so I'm sure you're aware if you have seen other interviews that I've done with, um, with Mela, with Chris, with Johnny. Um, at the beginning of all these interviews, I humbly asked the voice actors if they could please bless us by saying in their character's voice, "Mozambique here." Would you? Uh, would you be willing to do that? <laughs> for us i would all right just that yeah just you could say mozambique here level four or whatever you think caustic would say mozambique here level four first dude caustic 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 is the man uh, <laughs> the gas daddy <laughs> dude gas daddy the meme has come full circle even the voice actor of caustic says gas daddy it's <laughs> yeah oh yeah no i like the i like the term gas daddy i dig it <laughs> Uh, thank you for being here, and uh, I have a few questions from the community. But really, we're just—I mean—we're just, I mean, just going to be hanging out, um, seeing you know how you came to be on Apex, and um, you know what you're doing now, uh, opinions on quarantine, things like that. Character for Caustic, what did you did you know like what the character was? Did you did you like how did you get the script ahead of time, or how did that? I mean, how, no, how was I had, it? I had, a, I had a relationship with Respawn because <clears throat> of Titanfall, and, and okay. Because I played Bliss, right, mm. <clears throat> and so my relationship with with Respawn was kind of established, and a friendship with one of the writers, Manny, okay. uh, who's who's a phenomenal dude with terrible hair, but phenomenal dude. <laughs> um, I will never let up about his hair, um, and and uh, I think you know Bliss became a bit of a hit and was more of a focus um, in Titanfall Two. Um, Instead of just being a sort of uh, b b bodiless voice, sure, yeah, um, he had much more involvement. I got to play him as much more of a bastard, and uh, you know, a lot of for a lot of game. I mean, it says something about respawn too. For a lot of game companies, once you've played that character, they can't really see past that. Mm -hmm. So I was delighted to be asked to come in, and they they asked me, and they I guess someone put like two strings together and thought Caustic might be good for me. Oh, okay. Um, although I think I probably did an initial read at home. I think I did an initial audition. And then when I went in for the callback, it just felt like a glove that fit, I think, to everyone in the room. You know, sometimes you walk in and you just go, I'm home. And we played a little bit with the voice, <clears throat> but very quickly... First of all, you glom onto any voice that doesn't have to yell all the time because that's great. Um, <laughs> and so he was very quiet and intense and very kind of, and then slightly erudite and well-educated. And that kind of played into, you know, all the things I loved about him uh, uh, and his obsession with, with death and his disdain for humanity. Mm. Um, very attractive. You know, you always want to play those guys because they're <laughs> much more interesting and complex. I don't know what happened to him in his childhood, but it wasn't good you uh improv or done things that the writers didn't intend and then it, it you know they fell in love with and it's just kind of become a part of caustic yes and it's not it's not that they didn't intend it it's that mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know not everything can be 100 percent successful right. straight off so sometimes you get a line that just doesn't ring true to the character and what what's great and you don't want it you know happening all the time but what's great is that they're open to that um they know that you they wrote the character, but you feel the character. And therefore, if something's just not, or there's some better way of saying it, or if I can put a darker twist on it, or if I can, if I can, I'll usually give them two as written. Okay. And if I see an opportunity in the line, I'll throw one in. And more often than not, it's the one that, that came out of your instinct, the one that you pulled out of your ass that actually ends up getting used, <laughs> which is which is kind of fun. Thank you, Vessi, for partnering today's video. All right, boys, l let me ask you a question. Do you enjoy soggy socks? Because <laughs> because I don't. Well, introducing Vessi. Vessi is a classic shoe with all the benefits of Vessi's innovative features, 100% waterproof, sandproof, slush proof, slip proof, so they keep your feet totally dry. The weekend shoe is also machine washable. So since I live in Florida, it's always raining here and it's raining right now. So I decided to go outside, put these on and see if they really are waterproof and how comfortable they are. And Vessi really is not playing around. These have a dual climate knit material. So they make the shoes really comfortable and breathable. So they keep you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. It works. 
Like I said earlier, I live in Florida, so it's literally wet, soggy, humid, sandy, it's disgusting. Please, please never move here. But coming back inside from jumping in those sandy, wet puddles, my my shoes are my shoes are dry and they're still super comfortable. So if you're interested in buying a pair of vesties, maybe for the holidays, a birthday present, uh, or maybe for yourself, because because you deserve it, then you should definitely use code retro. Link in the description uh, for twenty five dollars off your next order. This is from the community. I did a, I did oh do a, I did do a community post. Uh, two days ago, uh, we Be have people. we Be have a, a lot of questions, but I'm I, <laughs> I'm only gonna ask I think probably a couple like the most popular ones. Um, so By the way. yes, uh, so, <laughs> so uh, the first one, the most requested one is, uh, can we ask JB Blanc if he can say I feel most alive when rapidly approaching death as <laughs> as caustic? The most the most demanded line. <laughs> I feel most alive. When rapidly approaching my death. He did a voice. He said it. He said the thing. He did it. I, I hope you're all <laughs> I hope you're all satisfied how uh, all of you can just go from from zero to one hundred. Immediately just to do the voice. Obviously you guys do it almost you, you know, you have to. It's 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 part of who you are, but like Mela. Mela can go from like her I don't know how to describe it. Just a regular straight voice. into the accent straight away. It's so and, weird. Uh, it's <laughs> right. yeah, that's the trick. But it's, I mean, you know, I mean, there are the voices live in certain places. Like yeah. Bane, I know exactly where he lives. You know, he's right down there. When I did my Arkham Origins, uh, Caustic has a very specific place that he sits, and so you can slot it right in. Mm. Um, and that is what's demanded of you all the time. And it, and it's like it's a place. So Caustic has a place. Okay. And I just lock into the place and that's where he is that's huh. his zone and my brain catches up with the rest of it own character you know i mean obviously they are on their own characters but have you ever played somebody i guess similar to him i think he's quite he's kind of unique that darkness and that calmness uh that steeliness is kind of it's kind of unique i mean have there have there been characters that have similar traits yes but no one quite like him mm -hmm. um and you know, as an acting proposition, he's delicious. He's delicious because there's, it's all nuance. It's very fine. It's finely written. It's economically written. These aren't, you know, you don't get long essays to kind of denote your character. Mm -hmm. You've got to say in that moment, Miss Paquette, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's really focused and, and pure. And that's what I love about him. Um, and then find the challenge of, like I said, finding the nuance within those very tight boundaries because he doesn't lose his shit. He doesn't, let, you know, scream and shout. He doesn't, he can be angry. He can be sad. He can be, you know, there's that really weird relationship going on with Ivan Watson. And it's like, how do you nuance that without sounding like a total pervert for a start? <laughs> but also just, you know, being true to that character is, I mean, it's a big honor, especially when something explodes like this, Dud. It, it, it's a real sense of duty that you owe this character to, to, to so your relationship with the character is really really special mm. uh, you want to honor that and you want to honor the fans and you want to honor the writers it's close i think it probably is father daughter mm. but there's a man who doesn't have any emotional links in his life and has largely steeled himself from that why we don't know but he's removed he's the most kind of disconnected almost in the, in that he lives in his own world and so i think she touches something in him that is that is the possibility of a rela and I don't mean a relationship relationship, but just some sort of relationship, and it kind of knocks him for six because that's he's kind of rejecting humanity, and yet she gets through that somehow, and and she he def she definitely triggers stuff. We have to be careful though because he can't go full full bore emotionally. Right. So I'm always you know in those bits that have become more recent law. Um, I'm always trying to sort of pull back and we, we know where the line is and we go close to the line and and finding that whilst retaining the character is a fascinating task for an actor. It's that kind of detail that really kind of weirdly turns you on and gets you excited about the character. At the same time, I was directing a scripted podcast which comes out in September called Daughters of DC. Tune into your favorite podcast app, September 22nd. I'll be sure um, to put the link uh, below. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> daughtersofdc.com. Um, and and I so I was directing that from six a.m. till nine a.m. Working on Blizzard stuff from nine a.m. till six p.m. and then working back on the podcast from six p.m. until ten p.m. with a teenage daughter in the house as oh well. My so God. <laughs> it was you know at times it the the industry I don't dictate when I work but work dictates me and so yeah. 
particularly under these circumstances, you kind of have to make hay while the sun shines. But I was super blessed to be able to carry on working. And, you know, I've got friends who have been in a lot of trouble who aren't in this industry. Yeah. Came together, respawned, and there was like a like a lunch or something where like Mela brought treats and Johnny brought treats. Did you, did you bring anything? Or what, what was that like? I think I just brought my fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I was I was in the middle of uh, I think it was it was all I could do to get the afternoon off and, and sure. be able to go. But I mean, any chance you get to go to the studio, it's fantastic. What we didn't realize was there was they sort of arranged a mini a mini con because we ended up okay. setting up tables and they had all these posters and the entire staff of Respawn, whoever was there, came to go and, to get signatures. <laughs> so we actually got to meet all the guys who, yeah. who made the game mechanically, which is so rare. And such a, it's such a high for us, and it was such a high for them, and everyone was just, we just, and Vince was there and gave us a tour of the building, and we met all the floors and all the designers and all the, who, who's responsible for different sections of the game. It was tremendously exciting for us, and, and to see the guys who build the game being so high on the fact that we were there was just super fun, and, and there was a lot of love in the building, man. It, I mean, maybe. Maybe you may you may maybe you look old, but I'm sure you're younger. Wrong than answer. Young, Wrong answer, Mister Speck. Young, younger than me, I look older than you. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm old and I have a great beard, but good try. <laughs> um, Despite appearances, I'm actually quite enjoying myself. Speaking of LA, how's how's the fire over there? There's I, I woke up this morning and there was like a, a a big gender reveal fire or something. I don't know what's going on. What is what is happening? At a gender reveal party, there was some sort of pyrotechnic and it set off this thousands of acres. I mean, it's just it's, it's, uh, pyrotechnics in Los Angeles should not mix ever. Yeah, uh, it's, just, it's just crazy. And it was tender dry. We had 108 in LA over the weekend, which is unheard of. I mean, it just doesn't get that hot here. Um, and and it's been very smoky. And the, what, what's weird is that the whole atmosphere changes color. It goes a very weird yellow. Mm-hmm. I came to LA first on a visit when I was a kid in like 1984, and that's how Los Angeles used to look all the time because of the smog. <laughs> there was just this kind of yellow. It was had a different light to anywhere else in the world. And you were like, yeah, very appropriate for my later life as the gas daddy. It felt <laughs> like someone had laid a gas trap everywhere. Placing gas trap here. It's LA. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one big gas trap but it's kind of built like a gas trap it's just a bowl where you can fill it with fumes and walk away your time but i do want to say uh thank you very much for being here thank you for taking time out of your day it's it's been a pleasure it's been funny it's been terrible it's been sad it's been shocking, been shocking. it's been everything it's yeah. it's it's it's, it's uh, all i could have asked I've, I've, i feel like i've run the full gamut of emotions and i don't know how long it's going to take me to recover i don't know maybe uh, maybe after this i can post it on youtube and maybe you'll get some exposure and finally get a real job oh I, my god that'd be nice if people well, had if people gave one shit about what i do <laughs> that'd be so great uh we'll see and maybe this can be your big break uh, i'll think about it I mean, i'll look forward to it okay. i look forward to it I'm wait, we're still waiting for it to happen <laughs> Thank you so much for being here and uh, pleasure, man. chat. Thank you for for chilling with us and um, you know asking questions and uh, just uh, hanging out. We really appreciate it. Uh, JB, if you could please give us the honor of giving us a caustic voice line and sending everybody out into the world. <laughs> I can certainly do that. Uh, let's see. Don't listen to me. Listen to yourself and realize you are at the very bottom of the food chain.